percent off. One yellow, followed by another yellow, equals red. Man, if you don't stop at the traffic lights, it's just too bad. CJ McCurty, he's got the loft, he's got the distance, and he's got another point for St. Gaul's. In around the house, Morris has it in his hand and over the bar. Good effort. On the break here, Kieran McGurty. This is the right go back on the break. Paul Veronica, and what a lovely point from Veronica. Kieran Brady, the captain. They've just played really well when they've been trying to hold the lead. And here is Brady, breaking forward, giving it to Kelly. The left half back, their master wing half. And what a point by Kelly, Sean Kelly, who's given a master class at half back play today. Absolutely master class at left half back. And now the lead has gone to a fabulous four points. And the Ireland Club final of 2010 is going to be between the two Wests. West Belfast and West Clare. That's West life for you. Final score. So it goes 115, cut off in 111. Well, a close encounter at Parnell Park, but it's St. Gaul's who go through to the All Ireland Club final against Kilmurray. I brick enough Clare. Tommy Lyons, I don't think either side probably played up to their, played up to their full potential last night, but I did hear the Corrifin manager afterwards. He was saying, look, no complaints. They're the better team, St. Gaul's were. Yeah, I, I suppose, Michael, it was an entertaining game, though. I think because oh, of, yeah, it yeah. was close, it was exciting, it was it had a lot of the things that, that you know, by going into extra time, I think both teams get, get, gave everything in it. I think certainly Corofin would be disappointed today at the look of the video and the amount of easy kind of freeze they gave away. The, you know, the things that, like, maybe a bit of lack of, lack of match practice might, be, might have caused. Both teams probably suffered with the bad January and that they maybe mm. weren't, weren't able to get the preparation the way they would like. But I, I, I enjoyed it now, and, and, and I thought... I thought both teams, you know, both teams, either team could have won it right through to the end. Yeah, there was one incident there, by the way, just to pick up on it, that uh, Jimmy McGee mentioned. He was talking about the square ball situation. There yeah. seemed to be a bit of a, a doubt about that one. Yeah, I mean, this is a, you know, a long ball in and, and you know, look, there's the ball there and it's well outside the square and he's in the square. You know, in the end of the day, the goalie and the fullback should have dealt with it, but... But, you know, that's possibly, you know, the, the, the new rules in, in, in the club competition which has been played in the old rules. And it's hard, to, it's hard to find fault with referees when they're switching from one to another. But it wasn't that's really... That's the new rule, but it doesn't apply to the club competition. Correct. It's the old rule that Correct, applies. Correct, yeah. And, so and the, that, should, that shouldn't have been allowed. Yeah, and, but, you know, Curra Finn also, you know, had a penalty claim maybe that could have gone for them and didn't. So those things always tend to balance out in the game. But, you know, at the end of the day, Gauls won the game because... Mm. You know, they had three boys, the McGorry brothers, who, who, you know, Sean Kelly, Jimmy mentioned there, had a great game, which he did. But these three boys were involved in every single attack. That, that, well, we that, all know, Tommy, that uh, club football is about families. Yeah, this is some family all, for St. Gold's. It's all part of the tradition of the GA. And here's, here's um, uh, Tony Goggins getting caught by, by Kevin McGorry into his brother. Now, that's a great skill, Michael, to be able to flick the ball in, in with two hands into the net. Like that. That's still a great skill in Gaelic football. And again, you know, a mistake by Corfin let them in. This is Kevin McGorty running straight at Currafin. Again, you know, pulling at the jersey there when, you know, you shouldn't be forcing him to do something. Again, this is Kieran coming across and kicking a lovely point. The McGorty's kicked 111 out of 114 from, from, from uh, St. Gaul's performance. And, you know, this is Kevin, another very, very good point. So if Kilmurray, you know, <laughs> it's a very simple tactic, Kilmurray have uh, on Paddy's day, and that's Mark to McGorty's. This young fella is a fantastic footballer, Michael. I mean, that's, that's as good a score as you see anywhere. You know, and he's a left-footed player, turned on to his right, and a great score. All right, Tommy, thanks for that. Well, now, apart from all of the National League and the club action over the weekend, we also, of course, had the Sigerson Cup. Now, yesterday's final at Leakslip brought DCU up against UCC. Reporting is Joe Stack.
It was Munster versus Leinster in league slip on the biggest day on the college's football calendar as UCC went looking for a first Sigerson title in 15 years, facing them a DCU outfit looking to bridge a four-year gap. It was advantage Dublin early on as Paul Flynn, Brian Sheridan and Captain Paddy Andrews were all on target, between them posting four unanswered points. In fact, a full 14 minutes passed before Kevin O'Driscoll opened UCC's account. DCU, though, thanks in the main to Meathman Sheridan, retained their scoring dominance to lead by six points to three at half time. They came in search of a goal as the second half got underway. Ross Commons' Cahill Craig had the first opportunity before Andrews was denied by a fine block from Ken O'Halloran. The line was eventually breached, however, 20 minutes from time. Sheridan's strike leaving DCU all of six points to the good. The introduction of sub David Gould did see UCC enjoy a brief period of scoring dominance and with further scores from Dahi Casey and Seamus Hayes the gap was cut back to three but that was as close as they would come. Man of the match Sheridan who contributed a 1-5 total yesterday settled for a point from the penalty spot before Michael Boyle denied UCC's desperate late bid for a goal. The dubs with four points to spare in the end as they took the Sigerson spoils on a 1-11 to 10 point scoreline. Yeah, Joe Stack reporting on DCU's Sigerson Cup win there. Tommy, DCU put in a huge effort into their football structure anyway uh, out in the college there over the last couple of years. Yeah, they have, Michael, and, and they've, they've, they've a lot of new sporting initiative in, 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 in some of their school programmes out there. And nine minor, like, the whole Sigerson competition and has has really got a clear run now, Michael, from maybe October right through until the end of February. And... There'd be a question mark, though, I would have, that there's a bit over-the-top training done by a lot of these colleges in, in quest for this silverware of Sigerson mm. Cup. I think the football played in Sigerson is actually a lovely brand of football and that it's, it's, it's a, the citizen that we would normally see at maybe a championship level isn't there. But, you know, DCU, you can't take it away from them. A fantastic win for them. OK, next, Tom. We have another commercial break coming up here on Sunday Sport. Now, when we come back, it's Dublin versus Tipperary and, of course, our special report on the wearing of helmets in Hurling. Welcome back again to Sunday Sport. Well now, Tipperary made two attempts to get their league campaign up and running, but the bad weather got the better of them at Semple Stadium. Well, Dublin might be forgiven for wishing that their last two games were called off with heavy defeats to Galway in the Welsh Cup and to Waterford, of course, in the league. Well, could the Dubs settle themselves today? Commentator at Parnell Park is Ger Canning. The near miracle man of Dublin hurling is back seven days after he was stretchered off to hospital with a suspected broken leg. Alan McCrabb wears the number 15 shirt for a side with Joey Boland wing back, Simon Lambert starting in midfield and David O'Callaghan at top of the right. And having picked a team three times and finally getting to play, Tipperary start their National League programme with Darren Gleeson in goal, Conor O'Mahony at centre half, Garroyd Ryan is in midfield and they link two current All-Stars, Noel McGrath and Lark Corbett, with their new captain, Owen Kelly, in the full forward line. Up towards Lark Corbett has moved into full forward straight away. Problems for the full back line, and that ball results in a penalty being awarded to Tipperary. The foul by Tomas Brady as Lark Corbett was going through. The new Tipperary captain, Owen Kelly, has this opportunity of getting the first score for Tip in the National League. Surely he'll go for a goal here. 13 points in the All-Ireland Final last year. Into the back of the net, what a start for Tipperary. And what a start for the new captain. That's broken there by David O'Callaghan. Possession lost. Liam Rush with the shot, comes back out towards Benny Dunn, fresh air puck, rushes after it once again, over his left shoulder, beautifully over the bar. Teams are level. Good score there by Liam Rush, and the persistence of Dublin there, well and truly underlined. And that's Alan McCrabb. There's Simon Lambert, hitting it with strength and with accuracy. Great point by Lambert. Former underage star, hoping to uh, cement a place in the starting 15 this season. 
back towards Liam Rush it comes but instead it's into the hand of Conor Mahoney. now they take off real opportunity here Seamus Hennessy firing it over the bar first of the day for the Kilroan McDonough player really really good score and it's eight points to one five the teams are level here it's on for John McCann.